Hi folks, it's Friday, it's Trek Collector time. Welcome back for another edition of my little Trek review. So guys, last week I covered the NCC 1701 from Diamond Select Starship Legend, which is a cool, funky little ship, which I do like. Uh, I loved the Pulsate and Buzzard collectors on that kit. And which the great thing is, we have seen improvements on Diamond Select um, with their models as they've progressed and done various kits. Now, down the line, you will see that I will be covering some of their older stuff and you'll see where people have given them bad reviews. But any of the previous, the, the, the more recent kits that they have done seem to be of better quality. And this week I will be doing another Diamond Select kit. But before I do that, I just want to bring something to your attention, guys. And this was got by my beloved wife for my birthday. And it is the Polar Lights 1350 scale TOS Enterprise. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is... Polar Lights are re-releasing that kit. Now, I went for the old kit because I haven't got confirmation and there is rumour circulating. The new kit is going to have a smooth primary hull um, because some of the model kit guys that were doing this were giving out that the, the lines in the hull were too fine. Now, with the new addition of the kit, they're going to use the paint scheme from the Smithsonian. So you're going to have that in the guidebook, which is confirmed. And you're going to get a smoother saucer section. Now for me with detailing. I don't know whether I'll have to pencil in grid lines. Or is there going to be a decal for. You know in where those grid lines are. Because they're very very fine. So I decided to go with the second edition of that kit. That was released. And I'm not 100% sure. Are they doing the shuttle bay. In the new release of the version of the kit. Because they did have problems. When it came into fitting that shuttle bay into the back of the kit with the lights. So, the reason, again, they're expecting the re-release of, not this kit. You will see it. It has, actually, if you check it out, Cult Man um, in the US are doing pre-orders at the moment. And they have a fantastic price for all my friends in the States or Canada. You are looking at 129 US dollars to pre-order that kit. Um, as I said, now, I'm not too sure does that include the shuttle bay. But... The reason why I am doing this is because, well, one, I wanted to, the reason why I got this kit as well, I wanted the shuttle bay. I do know it's going to be a pain in the butt to get that in there. Um, but I will take my time on this kit. Um, I've seen some great reviews and Captain Stuart Foley, if any of you guys watch Trek Yards, you see that he has this lovely, lovely kit lit, lit up in the background. And what he's done to light that, and the reason why I've held off getting that, is polar lights also do a lighting kit and the reason why i haven't gotten this kit up until now is the simple fact that um i was looking at around 500 pounds sterling to buy that lighting kit done by polar lights and there's no soldering required and it does look fairly fairly straightforward but uh last week and i'm waiting on shipment from at the moment i haven't received it yet so it'd be kind of cool if i do get the lighting kit and i open that and i'll open up the two together so you can have a look inside but um i managed to get it for it was about 125 euro. Uh, and that's coming from the States. But the lighting kit's back out. So Polar Lights have obviously reissued the lighting kit first. Or else this could be stock that people pushed aside. You know what I mean? And we're letting it out inch by inch and raising the prices. Which does happen unfortunately. So as I said, like there is rumour that they're not doing a shuttle bay at the back. So, you know what I mean? I'd imagine, I, I'd assume they're going to do a new lighting kit. I don't know. But the old lighting kit is back out. Um, and it is going for a steal at the moment. The lighting kit in some places, um, just looking like in in sterling, you're looking at £227.39. That's one place in England for the lighting kit. Um, you know, and then you go to the likes of... 98 pound 46 pence and then add in 18.95 so you're looking at about 115 pound to have the thing delivered from the united states which is very very good and then for people in the us you can get it for 129 dollars and 90 cents plus shipping so i'm not too sure on the shipping charges there and you can find them on ebay and you'll know the box make sure that it just has the polar 
lights but hopefully i'll have it next week and you can see so that kit is coming down in price so you know it does seem like the good first stepping stone if you are looking at building the one um 350 nx01 or the refit of starting my refit i'm gonna pull off i'm kind of hesitant whether i'm gonna actually paint or use the decals i'll see uh but you know what i mean this is not as complicated as the refit the refit is a very very tough 1350 model to put together now at the moment guys you can get the mo the lighting kit very very easy but there's a places out there that are trying to charge stupid money for this for version of the kit and there is one or two places out there you can still get it for 179.99 there is one on amazon.co.uk i think they're only charging four pound postage packaging in the uk but to give you some example as well on Amazon, there's a site looking for £332.99 free postage and packaging. Isn't that generous? And £378.23 plus £73.49. And that's sterling for that model kit. Um, as I said, I got this one from Germany and it cost me grand all in €189. Euro. So as I said, guys, I was stuck without the lighting kit. That's why I didn't buy this. So, you know, my advice would be get the lighting kit um, if you want to get the one that you know has a shuttle bay and has the grid lines and that you've seen other people build previously and you want to get stuck in. Maybe this is the kit for you. If you want to just get the lighting kit, get it now before the prices go up or before they become out of stock because that's what happened with the last set of the lighting kits they did become that did become very hard to find um, at least you'll have your lighting kit and then you can have the option of i believe the new edition is coming out late november and as i said it's yet to be confirmed about no shuttle bay because the price has come down quite a bit on it you know it, i know the recommended retailing price in the uk is 179 pound sterling for that kit you know, 129 uh, dollars off Cultman um, is fairly cheap, and that's a pre-order stage. But I have seen another site advertise at a pre-order stage for 149 dollars. So to me, I'd say the shuttle bay is being taken out of that kit. So you know, it gives you a chance. But I'm just throwing that out there to you guys that if you do want to build that kit, the lighting kits are available. Check eBay; you will find it. It's the polar lights, you know, which is great. And then you can actually get that kit built. So that's uh, hopefully I will unbox that for you next week, and I'll unbox the lighting kit if it's arrived by then, which would be great. So anyway, this week the model that I am cracking into is da, 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 finally. It is the Klingon Bird of Prey, and I know one of you guys out there asked me about this, and I was talking to you personally about it. It just I know Diamond Select have done a couple of editions of this. They've done the HMS Botany Bay, and that's the one with landing gears. And they have also done a cloaked version of the ship. Now, to be honest with you, I wasn't too keen on getting any of the alien ships until, by chance, I came across this in, again, Forbidden Planet. And believe it or not, I don't know if you can see this too well, Will it show? What does that say? If any of you can make that out, that says 25 euro. Now, I don't know whether they took money off because the box was a bit damaged at the back. I don't know, but I managed to pick this up for 25 euro. And when I seen it for that price, there was no way I could say no. And you know what I mean? It is, you'll see in the review, I am delighted that I've actually Got this kit. Um, let's go in with the box. There it is. So a bit of artwork on the back. Now to me, that doesn't look too good. Um, you know what I mean? It doesn't hold up true to the colors. I'm just wondering, is it the HMS Botany Bay? The HMS Bounty, I should say. Or is it, um, well, it's not the cloud version. I know that one. But I'm wondering how they're using it. To, it, it, it. It's definitely, it does not look like the Klingon Bird of Prey that's inside. Because the paint scheme seems completely different. Which is good. Because to me it looks too plasticky on the artwork there. Um, otherwise than that, they haven't really done too much with the box. Um, Star Trek, Starship Legends. We got a Bird of Prey in the corner. And as I said, just a bit of artwork. And then as usual down the bottom. 
Nothing too fancy about the bar box. Yeah. At least they got the Klingon Bird of Prey right, and it does look as though it's in the next time frame, Peter. <laughs> I just thought I'd try your name in there. So we're getting to the nitty gritty with this kit. Now, this is unfortunately one of these Diamond Select kits that has not, you know, it, 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 the, the stock levels are dropping. And as they're dropping, the price is going up, guys. So I'm just going to throw out some prices from Amazon. I know, you know what I mean? I've got to throw out for one or two years, guys, as well. eBay is where I have found it cheaper. I don't have shipping costs from eBay. But as I said, this stock seems to be going down. And as far as I know with Diamond Select is that they seem to have reissued a couple for the 50th anniversary of the Enterprises, which is great. Whether they're going to reissue some of the Klingon Bird of Price, I don't know. They seem to be reissuing some of the kits a lot this year. So hopefully with the launch, of, uh, well, hopefully they do the Reliant. And if they do do the Reliant, they might, you know, do the Klingon Bird of Prey. They might re-release the Enterprise A. Who knows? Fingers crossed anyway that these kits come back out available. But if you want to get that kit uh, for the UK, my friends, unfortunately, it's just Amazon for you guys. And it's uh, Amazon.co.uk and it is £55.58 pence sterling delivered. That's from Comic Cave and I've gotten a few of my model kits from them. They are very good. They're very quick at post and you will have it within a week. It's great service by the guys and you know what I mean? I have to say, thumbs up. I've never had any issues to well packaged the whole lot. So that that's the best price for my friends in the UK and also for Ireland. And I'm nearly sure it will be the same postage and package it might be three pound dearer for you and that'll get delivered to your to your home address which is great and um, for my friends in canada on amazon you are looking at 78 dollars and 39 cents and that includes free delivery but on ebay you can get it for 59.99 dollars plus delivery but you will have to check the delivery price yourself i'm only getting international rates unfortunately so that wouldn't really be able to help you. It's, it's great when eBay put up free posture packaging for, from where you're from, so at least I can give you guidance. But check out eBay first before you check it on Amazon. And then for my friends in the US, well, guys, I am really sorry to say, it is crazy. Amazon.com, it's $129.49, but you get free posture packaging. Well, that's ludicrous. But are my notes correct? I have seen one on eBay in Amazon or eBay.com for $49.99. So I think, guys, it's just going to be one of those models. Uh, if you are going to look realistically, I think for the people in Canada, the price range is correct on on Amazon. So you're free there. Um, the UK, if you can get it at the 55 58 from Comic Cave, definitely get it. But for my friends in the States, I'm afraid, start maybe hitting your local toy stores, your local comic suppliers, or check um, eBay and see if you can get a reasonable price. So without me going on any longer, because this has been a very, very long review, which I haven't done in a long time, I'm gonna jump into my kit. So folks, here she is. Diamond Selects Klingon Bird of Prey from the starship legends now look at the wingspan on this this is an absolute beauty um we have our diamond select stand but it's nicely done with the klingon logo which is absolutely fantastic the funny thing about the klingon stand is it seems a hell of a lot more sturdier than the federation stands oh well in fairness they did try and incorporate the the delta in a way but i think realistically if they could kind of look and go for stands further down the line with their next line of starships it would be great but let's get close in and have a look at this now look at you might get a bit of light glare and I, i'm going to leave the light on for a little while and then i'll kill it but there is just mass detail in this and um, it is absolutely lovely i don't know if you can pick up the red there but it is actually there and i love the copperish kind of effect which to me looks very very screen accurate they also have put in two tones of green on this model which is cool as well so you know what i mean we've got a darker green and we've got the the klingon green there um 
Klingon breed module. She is fairly. Now, again, the detailing on this is to me, from what I can see, is fairly spot on. I'm going to just try and go in there. So there's a lot of work. And the weathering as well. It's kind of a brown weathering effect. Absolutely makes this model. Now, as I said initially, it was more so because of space reasons why I wouldn't have picked up any of the alien races. And I will probably more than likely be going for the Diamond Select's latest um, edition, which is the, another Bird of Prey, but it's the Romulan from TOS, which, you know, on their last few runs of more recent ships that they have gone at, they've done such a great job. And I will probably add that to my collection. But like the detail on this is fantastic. There's the guns there. You know this is. You know it's well done. Um, they've done a great job on the paintwork. And does the wings part? Yes they do. We've got a red. Now it doesn't have the kind of uh, Star Trek 4. It just has kind of red here. I'll light it up in a few minutes when I turn off the lights for you guys. And I'll let you see all that. But I just want you to get in close up and see all the detail work that they have put in. Now quality, quality control on the paintwork here. It's absolutely. This is the best ship I have from Diamond Select. Where the paintwork is 100%. There's nothing there that I can fault on this. Paint wise anyway. Um, to me it's been done absolutely. But I'm just going to try and pop her off the stand here guys. So let's have a look at it underneath. Again there we go. There's the red there that I said. Which is fairly screen accurate. So this is absolutely 100%. Like to me it's I, you know what I mean? I to, to think I wasn't going to get this. And, you know, it's one of my favourite pieces. It's it's definitely one of my favourite by Diamond Select so far. And that says a lot because, you know what I mean? I do, I, I've always loved the Bird of Prey. And it's probably one of the most used alien <laughs> ship in Star Trek history. Especially for the Klingons as well. Um, but just the fact that they have, um, you know, done such a great job on it. Like it, it, it does, it kind of, their versions of the Enterprise don't even come close to this. Um, so if the rumors are true and they are going to do the Reliant, if it's any way up to this spec, we're, we're in for a nice treat if they do do the Reliant, which I heard rumors and I thought we were kind of hoping at San Diego Comic-Con that we might actually see a prototype which never appeared so who knows it seems as though um the Romulan bird of prey seems to be slightly delayed but as i said that is her and it's such a lovely size model it's it, it's big and we can have it in the three modes that we want so we can have her in her landing form now, I do know that they have done one, as I said, and it's the HMS Bounty. And she has landing legs. And I haven't really got that one. To me, I just... I don't like starships with landing legs. And that's just me for simple reasons that, uh, you know, I kind of like the illusion that they're in space. And that's all. That, that's only my peeve. But as I said, if anyone wants to post the photographs, if they do have their version and they want to post it up, on uh, the Trek Collector Facebook page, please share. But this one is taken from Star Trek 6, and you'll hear that now in a few minutes when I kill the lights and put on the sounds. But I'm going to give you her attack mode now. It'll just kind of. But again, and the great thing about this kind of a model is, you know what I mean? You, you can display it, you can play around with it after a while if you're. You know, it's. It, to me now, when I've seen this in Star Trek 3, it was the first time I've seen the Klingon Bird of Prey. And uh, 
what a ship and it was originally designed as a Romulan ship and then the original storyline was that what you call it um because they didn't want to change back in the whole lot they were going to basically have the Klingons steal this from the Romulans try to squeeze that into the film and that got cut out so she just became a Klingon vessel so to me it does look very Klingon but it'd be amazing if the Romulans were the main villains in Star Trek 3 would this ship be Romulan I don't see it I think I'm delighted I think it does look more Klingon Um, I know the bird part on it but I don't care you know I think it's absolutely lovely so just hang on two seconds guys I'm going to put it back up in the stand and then I'm going to whack on the lights okay okay guys so Again, with the most more updated and more recent uh, models by Diamond Select, this one, lucky enough, her lights stay on. And look at that. So we can look at the, the weapons there. Now look at that <laughs> on the camera. Does that not look like a photon torpedo? It's coming straight at you. Shields up. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Um, and we'll just go in closer, so... Let's see how the bridge lighting and so forth like that and you know it is such a lovely lovely piece i love that um it really looks well up on the shelf you know and it it is any of you klingon fans out there you know she is definitely one that you should consider getting and i hope you get it at a great price if you can't get it at a good price the only option that i could suggest is um maybe holding on for the hope that diamond select will reissue this kit so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go through the sounds and as you, most guys know i'm not too keen on sounds on the ship. i don't mind ship sounds but voices but here we go so we've got a cloak effect So good selection of sounds in here. There we go. Back to the start. And actually, there's a great question. Throw down it. Throw down in the old comment box there before. Who was your favorite Klingon villain from the movies? And that can include the Jura sisters if you want. But yeah, we had uh, some interesting Klingon villains. Who was your favorite? Um, slap it down in the comments. That'd be make an interesting discussion. So. I don't think there's anything too much more. Oh, I'll show you the base stance. Sorry, guys. And I'll get the light on for you here. So she is. And the other great thing about this model is she's very, very sturdy. I have to say. Very, very sturdy. I'm well impressed as well. Very heavy. Good support. You know. Um, Absolutely. So here's the base stance. So I like this base stance. This is done very, very well. Um, Yeah, look at that. Cling on could we paint it? Maybe we could. It's still nice and black. And again, it's just typical thing. But whatever it is, this just seems way more sturdier than the other one. So to me, I do feel as though Diamond Select, as they've gone on with their later models, they have made these stands a hell of a lot better. And, you know, guys, let us know what you think as well in the comment section below. Have you got the later editions? Have you found their stands getting better? But it does appear as though Diamond Select are listening to us, the consumer, which is great, which is what we want. Just like Polar Lights have listened to the customers with the, the 1350, which is fairly cool as well. So it's great that we have good uh, good companies out there supplying kits for us that are actually starting to listen to the fans. So, guys, uh, that is that is my uh, Klingon Bird of Prey. Now, will I put it up to scale with something that you might... Yes, okay, I will. And what I'll do is a lot of people do seem to have 
the Eagle Moss collection. So what we'll do is there is the bird of prey from Eagle Moss. So there's a size comparison for you there, guys. And that was early on in the edition as well. So I'm sure most of us have that. So there you go, folks. Um, so let us know what you think of her in the comments. Guys, that is my Star Trek uh, Starship Legends Klingon Bird of Prey from Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered Country. Um, if any of you have got the HMS Bounty um, or have got the cloaked Klingon Bird of Prey, um, it's unlikely that I will get them due to that I've got one and I do actually really, really like it. But by all means, please share with the group, uh, share with myself. Yeah, the link to my Facebook page is directly below um, in the usual spot. Um, if you can't find it, it, just look me up. I am the Trek Collector, the Trek Collector on Facebook. And throw us on a few pictures. Um, you know, I don't mind anyone posting up stuff that's uh, Trek related on that page. And share with the group. And, you know, who knows if I like your photographs and I like what I see. Who knows? I might have to pick one up. But um, let me see. Review. Well, I always say my review goes price, and unfortunately, guys, I have to do it on the price that I paid, and I paid twenty five euro for this. So was that a steal for me in Forbidden Planet? What do you think? Yes, it was. It was brilliant. <laughs> as soon as I seen it, I was like, yes, I'm getting that. I think I nearly knocked down half half the display. <laughs> if I remember right, when I say it, I was like, what? That's twenty five, and I grabbed it. Um. It has to be 10 out of 10. And as I said, like the detail, the artwork has improved so, so much. And well done, Diamond Select on that one. So that is getting a 10 out of 10. Um, just going back to the Polar Lights 1350 Enterprise. I might have mentioned it earlier on. The, if you do get the kit that I'm getting and you start it and you decide that you might want the Smooth Hull or anyone that is building that kit at the moment, I do know that Polar Lights are also going to be selling the primary hull separate with the smooth hull if you want and i believe rumors of that at the moment are 40 us dollars it's fairly fairly reasonable um so you know that's one thing that you might want to think of um so other news for you of this week is the fact that uh we have a nerd escape coming up next week because we've gone fortnightly myself and damien and we have a special guest on the Nerd Escape. And this guest might have something to do with a certain ship behind me there. And not just that ship. He's done quite a lot of work. He's worked from Star Trek, the movies. He has worked um, on The Next Generation. He has worked on Voyager. And it's the one and only Rick. Rick Steinbeck. Welcome to the Nerd Escape, and we are looking forward to having you on the show. Myself and Damien are really, really excited to talk to you, Rick. Um, so, yes, we're just going to do our normal two Irish Trekkies having an L yap with a friend uh, from Star Trek. So, if you have any questions, guys, please post in the comments section below, and I'll be happy to pass them on to Rick. Any questions that you're doing, I think myself and Irish Trekkie are going to give Rick um five starship five federation starships of his choice his favorite designs and he's open so we can do hero ships and all that and myself and the irish trekkie are gonna have to pick five federation vessels and specifically an irish trekkie if you are watching no cheating no support craft and that includes runabouts captains yachts and so forth and including the aero shot no 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 and um, we have to only pick, we have to pick five um, Federation vessels, our favourite designs. And we'll have a little chat with Rick. I'm sure, I think there's one definitely on the top of the list. And I'd say Irish Trek, he's going to throw it in there too. Actually, I can think of two actually now coming to think about it. That are Rick's and I'd say they will both be in myself and Irish Trekkie's top five. So yeah, myself and Irish Trekkie are going to welcome Rick to the Nerd Escape. And it's great to have you on board. Really looking forward to doing that. And the Nerd Escape should be out probably Sunday week. 
So you'll have an, uh, an episode of the Trek Collector before that. So as I said, guys, any questions that you would like to ask Rick, by all means, please leave them in the comment section below. And also as well, guys, if you do want to check out the Irish Trekkie, check out his Facebook page as well. I'm sure he's done the same as well. Throw in comments there. I think he'll have a little announcement part there so you can throw over comments there if you want to ask any questions. So guys, this has been the Trek Collector for this week. I want to thank you very much for, as always, tuning in and listening to my review. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. So I would like to say, be good folks, take it easy, look after yourself. Slongafol, Ihoa, and for my friends in Klingon, Kaplok.